I'm with Cormac Russell at the end of uh, yet another very successful workshop on asset-based community development, this time with people from Lower Green in uh, Surrey. It's a chance to ask you, uh, Cormac, what's the essence of asset-based community development? I think at the heart of the asset-based way of thinking is, is that people have strengths and assets, that those strengths and assets best get connected in the place where they live that the connections are made by relationships. So people making connections by focusing on what they have and how to use them to secure what they need. I think social justice is at the heart of it. You can't measure a strong community by resilience. Strong communities, I think, are truly measured by their ability to welcome the stranger at the edge. So that matters. Social justice really matters. And ultimately, it's about a citizen-driven movement. It's about citizens doing what only citizens can and being competent and capable in that space because they can't be replaced. There is no surrogate, there's no replacement for the power of people coming together to create associational action. So it's really recognizing that, that there's things that only citizens can do, and if they don't do them, they won't get done. I think you quoted some figures suggest uh, about the different proportions of activities that citizens could achieve mm. Uh, agencies could achieve mm -hmm. and that needed some yeah. co-development production. Right. What were those? That's right. So th today we were sharing uh, as the process emerges and it gets, uh, it gets deeper and more and more people get engaged. What starts to happen is people move from feeling that they're clients of services to really thinking about themselves as citizens of Lexi and Wilson. And when people get involved at that level and really feel that power, they tend to identify you know, what needs to happen in the long term. And typically we find that communities identify, you know, roughly um, 100 things, somewhere in between 70 and 100 things that they believe must happen for a community to be a place where, you know, they can grow stronger. Our experience is, is about 56% of those uh, things that they identify as must-haves for a community to grow stronger are things that they themselves believe they can do. The other, I suppose, notable percentages around co-production where they identify what they need help with from outside. That's in the, in the, in the low 20s. And the rest is uh, what they expect outside agencies, the state, to do unilaterally. So the single largest figure percentage is in the domain of people power. The next is in co-production. The smallest is in services and state intervention. And that happens every single time. And we talked about uh, the role of community builders, and uh, you said um, there was a question that you would ask community builders at the end of the week. Mm -hmm. So my that? question to community builders when they finish their week's work is, what did you not do this week that empowered a citizen or citizens to step up? And uh, what was your... What's your sense of the workshops which you're doing around the country now? Are you finding... Um, similar ideas, attitudes emerging, people changing their minds about what they are capable of? I think so. I mean, context is everything, and obviously we're in tough times, so uh, we're, tra we're mindful of that as we travel around. But I think the process of the workshop is such that um, it gives people the opportunity to connect with what they already know. And what they already know is that you can't build community on the half-empty part of the glass. You have to start with what you have. So for most people, it's a no-brainer. Uh, they just haven't had that kind of conversation before, or at least haven't had it in such a deep way. So similar ideas, similar energy, and we've been very fortunate in a lot of ways that uh, the workshops have inspired people to go and do what we know they can, which is people power change. I mean, we have now maybe half a dozen different types of community building, organizing, development and there's always a tendency to say well um, which is better what's different about them but what do you see that's the same and where there may be some mm. scope for sharing ideas inspiration and generally raising the level mm. of confidence in communities i think what's uh, there are six things i think that we have in common um, i think we believe that people should be engaged on the basis of their strengths not their deficits I think that's, that's a common feature. Uh, I think also what's a common feature or a shared core is the way I think about it, is we believe that the place where a lot of activity happens where people organize their lives is the place, it's, it's the neighborhood. 
for that context. That doesn't exclude online uh, connections or indeed communities of issue, but place matters. I think the third feature that's common is that there's a commitment to social justice. We're not just trying to build bonded social capital, we're really trying to bridge. We're trying to br encourage the broadening of the circles of participation. I think the fourth is, is that we believe that uh, real change is citizen-led, it's community-led, not professionally-led. I suppose the, the fifth piece for me is, is about relationships. It's relational power. It's not about money power. It's not about programmatic power. It's not about political power. It's about relationships. So there are five core shared uh, pieces. I think the sixth is, is that in a way we have a shared calling. Uh, to use the term, and I, I use it in a secular, not in a religious sense, I think we have a shared calling. It would be profoundly unwise for us to commodify that calling, to say that it's about ABCD, or it's about social uh, design or anything. Uh, each of those are a tool, and they're at the service of citizens. The calling is to support people to do what only they can in the freest space that we have available to us, and that's in community life. And uh, I don't really mind what people call themselves as long as they're servants of that energy and of that calling. They're my friends. As long as they can come beside community and form some kind of a halo of support rather than try to fix broken people. And as long as they believe in people's strengths, I think we share a common calling. And uh, we should be talking to each other much more than we currently are. It's about, I think, fundamentally moving away from the notion that we're trying to build a service, that we're trying to get commissioners to commission us to do to take a brave move uh, away from thinking about ourselves as organizations uh, with a product to sell, and much more as organizations, or maybe as a movement with a shared calling. I think if we can think, think of ourselves as a movement, differences start to disappear.